G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. This time in the workshop we have yet another Mitsubishi Triton, and this time this fella's got the dollar sign stuck on the dash. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out together. According to the scan tool, we're looking at a P2413 EGR system. Wow, that's very specific, isn't it? Any clues on what that code means? Just having a look at uh, obdcodes.com, it brings up that code, the P2413. Uh, some of these symptoms, now the customer has complained a little bit about this. They did say the other day when they went on a long trip, it was blowing a bit of black smoke under hard acceleration. Now the check engine light is on now, it's only just come on. And of course some of the causes, uh, defective EGR, etc., exhaust leaks, uh, the list goes on. Of course the vacuum leak lines, but this is electronic so that shouldn't actually be a problem. Shorted EGR. Now keep in mind I have done an ultrasonic clean on this uh, well, about a week ago now I guess, and it was extremely dirty. I'll put some photos up so you can have a quick look at the inlet manifold before and after shots. So I'm just wondering if there was still a bit of carbon that's jammed the EGR valve either open or closed or perhaps got stuck on the rod, something along those lines. I'll check it electronically or electrically and make sure that it's set up okay before I make that call. I'm in live data at the moment. As you can see, the EGR valve position is zero, but also the target position is zero. Now, I have had this problem before with the uh, Tritons, unless you actually clear the code, the EGR won't activate. So I'll have to clear that code now that I've recorded it, and I'll see if I can get the EGR to kick in or not. There's no freeze frame data attached to it, so I've really got nothing to lose by erasing that particular code now that I've recorded what it is. I might have to uh, do some testing at the EGR. Might have to physically pull it off because I've got a feeling that it's stuck with a bit of carbon. That's my thoughts. Okay, I'll go into the generic OBD2. Let's see what we can find there. Okay, trouble codes. Performance is pending. Uh, ignition on, engine off. Erase the code. Erased. And it's still coming back. Hmm, maybe it is an electrical problem. Let's have a look at the connector. Maybe the connector's just wiggled out. So there's our big connector. Has that wiggled out? No, that's secure. No problemos there. It's got a range performance, they're saying. Hmm. Well, it was definitely clicked in tight. Hmm. I'd have to physically pull the uh, little uh, motor assembly off itself and have a look. I've just pulled off the motor and potentiometer assembly, popped him off to one side, and this is all the, after the cleaning that I've done. You can see that it's retracted all the way back, which means that the EGR will be closed. Now I did notice, have a listen to this. Now I'm just wondering if it's had a bit of carbon jammed in there and holding it shut, it does feel a little bit worn there. I mean, these do wear, it's done 200 and something thousand Ks and I have replaced them before on other vehicles, so it does feel very sticky. I might just chuck a, a tiny bit of lube down the shaft and hopefully that might help um, just to free it up just a fraction. We'll see if we can get rid of that check engine light, etc. I just chucked some freeze and release on there just up in here and hopefully that got the shaft moving. It certainly feels a lot better, a lot smoother than it was before. So of course now I've got to check it out electrically and make sure that this is okay. So I've just left the motor out to see if I can actuate it without going through all the testing on it. And lo and behold, I've been able to clear the fault code. So that's good news. Hopefully I should be able to activate the thing now. And I reckon it was just a stuck EGR. I'll recommend to the customer that that gets replaced. Uh, actuator test. We'll just see if we can actually move the thing. EGR 50% select. All right, so as soon as I hit the start button, uh, we should see movement at the EGR, which we're not. Hmm, curiouser. It appears to be commanding, but we're certainly not getting any response, are we? Hmm, have to check for powers and grounds, etc. I just figured out the wiring. I don't really need a wiring diagram in this case. 
Uh, we have a motor which is yellow and purple. That's reversible, of course, positive and negative to go one way, negative, positive to go the other way. Then we've got a blue one up the top right hand side, a brown one in the middle, and then a green one to the top left. Now the motor itself, I'd like to drive it by putting 12 volts to this point and this point on the actual motor, not the wiring, of course. We're leaving that completely off the engine. For those of you playing along at home, that's the configuration of the wiring looking into the back of it. And the motor itself is the yellow and the purple. And our potentiometer, uh, the five volts will be over there. Uh, the green, I believe, will be earth and the control wire will be that brown wire. I'm not quite sure the ohmage that's meant to be allowed with this particular motor. This is 7.4 ohms. And as you can see, I've got to cross the bottom two pins there. And what I'm going to do now, it's obviously not a dead short, but I'm going to power this up and we should see a little pin will move in and out. I have done this before and I can put a link up there for you so you can see how to actually do it. Just connecting one of my little batteries. I've got positive here, negative here. It shouldn't really matter. You should see the pin will move. So let's just hook that up and see what happens. Not a and there's plenty of sparkage there, notice that. We'll flip him around the other way, just in case, uh, you know, maybe it's jammed in place and it doesn't want to move. We'll try that. This was covered in carbon, remember? So let's try that again. Let's have a look at the pin tool. Just major sparkage, not happy. So with these motors, you should be able to pull them in and out a little bit. <coughs> Max muscle's not working. Or push it in a little bit. This thing is rock solid. Um, I believe it's just jammed up with carbon for some reason. Electrically, it seems to be okay. Of course, that's why the check engine light is on. That's why the fault code is there. And that's why I can't do actuations, simply because it's saying, hey, this isn't working. I'm gonna cut this feature out, bring on the check engine light. So yeah, this thing's seized. While this wasn't purchased through a dealership, it's the genuine item. That's what the box says anyway and it was many hundreds of dollars cheaper. I've used these EGRs before and had good success with them. There's the part number guys, but of course check for your particular vehicle. Let's have a look inside. Of course, once you've got over the initial excitement of a new part, that new part smell, <laughs> yep, pull him out the box, chuck him to one side, and yes, it appears to be the correct item here. Um, genuine, I believe. So. I've had good success with these before, no problemos. How does this compare to the old one? Let's check it out. I've got the old one off and they're sitting side by side. Can you guess which one's which? Yes, of course, new, old, new, old. So just to satisfy curious minds, I'm gonna do some testing between the two. First of all, I'm gonna do some resistance checks between the individual circuits, the motor in this one and the motor in that one. In theory, they should be the same or pretty close the same. Here's our old one. What's that? 2.7 ohms. It's fairly low, isn't it? Let's have a look at the new one. And the new one is saying 3.8 ohms. Eh, a little bit different. But two things can be established. Firstly, that this is not open circuited. Secondly, that it doesn't have a dead short. Perhaps it's got a tiny short between the windings, but that's not the issue. Okay, let's power them up and see what they do. Maxi does love a new cheap tool. And here's one that you probably haven't seen before. It's a Denu, I assume, ADS1013D dual oscilloscope. Now you've seen me use my little tiny single channel oscilloscope. You've even seen me use two of the same thing joined together to make a twin oscilloscope or a twin channel oscilloscope. But I splashed out almost $200 for this fella. And hey, that's not too bad. What I wanna do now is electrically compare the new one with the old one and see if there is a difference, if it's a mechanical problem or an electrical problem. Now in theory, we should see more current come through if it's a mechanical issue, but hey, that's not necessarily true in this particular case. Let's have a look at the waveform firstly of the new one and see what that looks like. I've got my current clamp hooked up on this wire here on my new EGR valve actuator. Let's have a look on the waveform over there. Excuse me if I'm in the road. So we're looking at about 400 millivolts over on this side, max. So let's try that on the old one and see how that compares. I've got my current clamp hooked up now. 
on this particular EGR on the same wire so we should get the same sort of reading or waveform. We can hear nothing's happening. We're only getting 300 millivolts in this particular case. It's a little bit lower than the other one, isn't it? Well, what it means is electrically, it's okay inside of here, but I would have thought that the current would have raised because there is no mechanical. It's got a mechanical issue inside the actuator that's not allowing the pintle to move up and down to uh, bring the actuator in and out. You heard me say before that you would expect a higher current draw to be measured on the seized EGR valve, and that's this bloke over here. This one is one that I've got off a previous vehicle that I use for testing purposes, and as you can see, it's got a vacuum leak at the breather. There's a seal in here, or just across here, and there was a vacuum leak, so that had to be replaced. But for testing purposes, this is ideal. So how I've got my test set up is I have the seized one over here, my working one over here, a current clamp in between. I'll test them individually. Now, remember I said that you would expect a higher current draw off this seized one because it's mechanically seized, not electrically seized. If it was electrical resistance, we would expect the current to drop. But in actual fact, because it's mechanically seized, we're going to see the current rise. So let's just try that and see what sort of reading we're going to get. And the reading we get is 6.6, 6.5 ohms. Let's try it on the other one. And here's the one that should be working okay. So watch for the valve operating as well as the current reading here. So just going to energize it now. And we're getting five, five amps current draw, which is to be expected. There you go, clear evidence that this fella is seized. Uh, electrically it's okay, the actuator is working, but the pintle is actually seized because it's got more mechanical resistance, the current actually goes up. Some time ago, I built myself a function generator, well, thingy. And what it does is allow me to drive certain things via duty cycle, which is voltage being pulsed very, very quickly, just like the ECU does. And that is how this EGR valve works. The PCM will pulse voltage very, very quickly. That will allow this valve to move in and out consistent with the amount of duty cycle being passed through it. It stops things from overheating and you have much better control over it. Let's have a look at how this little fella works now. So you can hear it buzzing at 115 hertz. We've got it at 18% 18, uh, 18 duty cycle. Let's just bring that up a little bit. Have a look at the valve. It should start to open shortly. There he goes. Can you see that? Can you see it moving open? So we're up to 34%, take him up a little bit more, 34, 40%. And if we go back down again, duty cycle wise, we are just about to close the little valve. In you go, fella, come on. There we go. And that there is duty cycle according to what the ECU does. So I know that this EGR valve will work correctly on the vehicle. Pre-tested and quality control according to Max. The EGR valve is now installed, but there's one thing I must do before I actually get this EGR system up and running, and that's to clear this annoying EGR code. So let's do that. Get rid of that. And we should recheck it just to make sure. So we'll go back out and rescan it just in case, but it should be gone. No DTCs. Let's see what it's like when it's actually up and running when we have a look at our data list. Let's just start that up and see what she does. I'll check engine lights out, that's good. Don't have any position of the EGR valve at the moment. But at least that pesky uh, money lights out. There we go, just kicked in. So there we have 67% at idle. It's not unusual, and there we go, backwards and forwards. So I just had the uh, revs up a little too high for it to kick in, but uh, that's the duty cycle that we're looking at there. And that's like what we did on the bench, isn't it? That's the duty cycle that the EGR is moving according to what the uh, PCM or the ECU dictates that it should be according to different conditions. So yep, she's up and running, sweet.
And not only that, notice our desired and actual are pretty much the same. In actual fact, they are the same. Awesome. I've just been for a decent road test because I want to carry out a small injection quantity relearn. Now the problem being is you've got to get your auto trans fluid up to 60 degrees plus but your coolant temperature has to be between 80 and 90 degrees. I've got my air conditioning turned on just so that the fan hopefully will cool down the radiator coolant. Uh, but you can see here in the meantime, the EGR valve is moving up and down according to uh, the target value, depending on if it's idling or if it's raised on revs because of the air conditioning being brought up. You can see it's just tootling up and down there. Wait a sec for the aircon to click in, there we go and you can see that it changes straight away. Nice. I've just put a fan out the front to try and encourage the coolant temperature to come down. It's stuck on 91, doesn't want to play. Don't have to wait forever because this fuel temperature has to stay above 30 and my auto trans fluid above 60. Special functions, learning, F1, okay. Okay, and executing, woohoo, finally. Oh man, that was a pain, here we go. Hang on to your seats, folks. Although, notice the temperature is 91. We must have just snuck in there in time. Yeah, it's back down to 90, so yes, we must have pressed the button just at the right time, I'm thinking. 60 megapascals. Watch that fuel pressure as it goes up and down as it goes through its five stages. And as the RPM increases, the rail pressure will increase. That's what it's done for. And it will go through a counter. Um, at the moment, it's doing number four. The revs go up. This will probably increase the pressure. There we go. Nice. Now I did this not so long ago, so hopefully it's not too far out. But because I, it had some issues with the EGR, I just wanted to do it again, just to make sure it covered all my bases. There we go, we're now going into number one cylinder, then it'll probably go number four. There we go, perfect. So I'd say they're companion cylinders. That'll go two next, I'd imagine. So it's just comparing in between those cylinders. Sounds kind of funky, huh? And we are completed, excellent. Should idle better now and uh, you know, all the injections are done at the correct time. Let's just go back to our data list and have a look at our EGR valve and make sure that that's still working okay. Generally speaking, uh, petrol engines don't have EGR at idle, uh, but the diesels tend to at the moment. Yep, she's responding quite nicely and they seem to be very, very similar, don't they? The target and the actual position. Sweet. I'd call that a success. I felt that I owed you guys just one last step in the diagnostic process. Uh, maybe it's just a bit of OCD on my part, whatever the case may be. I've drilled out the actuator pins here. They were just like plastic. Now I haven't pulled anything off as yet. So let's see what we find. Let's just pop this fella up, if it'll come up that is. Uh, come on fella. Uh, oh, it should unscrew of course. Yeah, there it goes. Look, it's coming off now. Now, oh, look at that, it's all rusted inside. There we go, there's our issue. She was full of rust. Sweet. Looks like some sort of uh, spring there. Okay, and... Not sure if you can see inside there, but yeah, it appears to be a bit on the rusty side. Maybe that's why it wouldn't turn. Hmm, quite possibly the fault. What happens here? That's a bearing of some description by the looks of things. It's going around and around okay. Feels all right too. It's interesting though, the pintle itself doesn't look like it's got any rust on it. It uh, just appears to have a bit of 
just appears to have a bit of rust on this outside of the bearing, but the bearing feels fine. It's not notchy or anything like that. So yeah, not sure about that fella. So I've just been gently tapping this on the vice head here, just top, just tapping it up and down like this. And you can see that the uh, outside of the actuator is actually moving. So hopefully I can pull it apart, show you what's inside. Right, so basically all it is, is <laughs> if I can get a hold of it, all it is, is a solenoid. There we go. And you can see the, the uh, field coil in there. Now look, there's no, there's no rust in there at all. It's uh, quite clean. Doesn't appear to be a problem. Um, the only rust that I can see is on this little bearing here. And the bearing certainly isn't seized at all. That's going around fine. There's no notchiness in it or anything like that. Very interesting. So this EGR valve is not surprising, but it's a basic motor. We have a rotating component in the middle, the armature. We have a field coil around in the middle. You may be able to see the metal there. And we have a pintle in the middle, which moves in and out on a thread. So as this assembly rotates, it grabs hold of that thread and turns it up and down. As you can see here, we'll just put him there. And as we hold that, you can see the pintle being pulled down, can't you? And it was in that seized position there, wasn't it? And it comes back up and it comes down again, exactly like that. And that gets pulsed by the ECU. Ah, oh, there's our problem there. Our base bearing is seized. Look at that. Look at that, eh? And look, there's no rust. There's no water around this area here, none whatsoever. It's only rusted up on the top, just on the outer collar. And there's no rust on the inside here. But this bearing is seized. That was the problem. We had a mechanical problem on the pintle just like I thought. Excellent. I like to pull stuff apart and just prove my theory to make sure that I got it right. So there you go, seized bearing on the bottom of the pintle. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that there's a pintle or a pin that sticks up on the bottom. That fell out right there. And that locks into the bottom of the motor. That fella right there. And there's also two locking tabs, or two tabs that it rotates on, that fella there and that fella there. And as that provides a magnetic field, it spins it around. But yep, hmm, ceased bearing. I'm pleased to find that that was the fault. Whoa, man, it's turned cold here. All of a sudden, it's enough to freeze the icicles on a snowman. So this Triton is now completely done, EGR valve replaced. It was mechanically stuck. Electrically it was okay, but mechanically stuck inside that pintle of the motor itself. So that's yet another Triton out of the workshop, ready to go back to the customer. Guys, I hope you got something from this video today, apart from frostbite, some good information with the Mitsubishi Triton EGR valve system. If you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos, do you? Of course not. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.